I'd like to welcome everyone this morning. At this time, if you could please stand as able for the presentation of colors to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem. Wheel march. Color guard, halt. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, a nation under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Present. You may be seated. Again, good morning. On behalf of the Max Creek Schools, uh, school board, administration, faculty, and staff, I'd like to welcome you to everyone, everyone to today's Veterans Day Assembly. My name is Jason Trusty. I am the secondary principal here. Today, we are honored to host a program in honor of all veterans who have served this great country, as well as recognize these veterans who were able to join us today. Standing up here, I see many different people from many different walks of life who have served this country. Seeing you makes me proud to live here 
and also reminds me of how lucky I am to live in a land that has so many freedoms. The freedoms are afforded to us because of your service to the country. So let me humbly and gratefully say, thank you for your service and sacrifice for all of us here today. Veterans Day originally began as Armistice Day, meant to signify the end of World War I, which was deemed the Great War, or the war to end all wars. In June of 1919, the Treaty of Versailles was signed, even though fighting had ceased seven months previously, when Allied nations and Germany had signed an armistice that went into effect on the 11th hour, on the 11th day of the 11th month. In November of 1919, President Wilson proclaimed November 11th as the first commemoration of Armistice Day with the following words. To us in America, the reflections of Armistice Day will be filled with solemn pride in the heroism of those who died in the country's service and with gratitude for the victory, both because of the things from which it has freed us and because of the opportunity it has given America to show her sympathy with peace and justice in the councils of the nations. In 1954, after the return of veterans from both World War II and Korean War, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed a bill rededicating November 11th as Veterans Day and encouraged Americans to commit themselves to the cause of peace and to honor America's veterans for their courage, honor, patriotism, and sacrifice. The military men and women who serve and protect the United States from all, come from all walks of life. Parents, grandparents, children, friends, neighbors, coworkers, and are an important part of our community and the many communities around the country. These men and women were ordinary people until they heard the call of duty and answered it. They left everything they had known their families, homes, and lives. Not for recognition, fame, or even the honor we bestow on them today. They fought to protect our country and to maintain our way of life. Today we pay tribute to all these men and women who served this country both in wartime and in peace. My grandfather was a Marine for 30 years and was very proud of the time he spent in the Marine Corps. I have cousins and uncles that have also served in the military and say that it was some of the best experiences they had, not because of the hardships, but because of the growth. My dad's stepdad was also in the Army as well. Now his flag and my grandfather's flag are now in my parents' living room, reminders that your service is not about me, but about the men and women that sit here before us today. Today's program is just a small token of our appreciation for you and your service. Again, thank you for your service. At this time, we have a, a video from a Max Creek graduate from the class of 2017. Many of you may know or may not remember Xavier Montez. Xavier Montez is a second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps who is currently stationed at Quantico going through the basic school. We do have a short video clip uh, talking about his experience in the military and also kind of where you are seated as well.
I remember you know, helping out with the Veterans Day Assembly in high school and uh, you know what, what kind of event the events took place back then. Um, since then, you know, a lot's changed. I've gone to college, received a Bachelor of Science from the uh, United States Naval Academy. I commissioned the United States Marine Corps, and now I am a, a young Marine officer here at the basic school in Farmville, Virginia. Uh, what am I doing here? All, all newly commissioned officers in the Marine Corps have to go through the basic school, which is where I am right now, and you learn everything needed to be a professional work with the commander. So, uh, land navigation, a lot of running through the woods with a compass, a lot of uh, squad and platoon level tactics, uh, weapons firing, riding in you know, helicopters, ospreys, and things like that. A lot of fun stuff, uh, but a lot of not fun stuff sleeping outside when it's cold, uh, eating, eating meals out of the bag, and uh, studying, you know, a lot of school as well. And you know, working hard in jail. So, any of you who are, you know, might be interested in pursuing the same path or just the military in general, uh, there's some basic questions I think I, I'll pose to you real quick. And if you if you want to pursue, you know, this path, you should, I think you should consider them. Um, the first one is, hey, you, are you willing to work hard? Uh, most people are. And if you join the military, like you got to push outside your comfort zone, or you're going to find something that you're not good at. You got to be willing to work past that. Uh, but if you're a hardworking person, which you know most people are, that <laughs> like Max uh, you know, this might be a community that you should consider. Uh, second question, you know, do you see yourself wanting to be surrounded by young, motivated, selfless men and women? I think most people would answer yes. Uh, but again, that's the organization you'd be joining. Uh, it's outstanding. Uh, young men and women who decide to go start something a little greater than themselves. Uh, those are the kind of people you'd be standing by and working with every day. Um, you have a desire to lead others, you know, develop and train them, specifically if you want to go the officer route, which is the route that I went. Um, you know, do you see yourself one day in that leadership position making an impact on you know, some, some young Marine or, or Navy sailor or, or a soldier's life and uh, kind of mentoring them, develop, developing them. Uh, it's a lot of responsibility, but if you see yourself one day, if you try for that goal, this is a great opportunity to do that as well. Uh, and you know, the most important question is, are you someone who wants to make a difference? You know, should you decide to join uh, the military, you will inevitably make a difference no matter how small or big, uh, whether it's one person or you know hundreds and hundreds of people, you're going to impact someone's life. Uh, and you know, the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, they're, they're important. And you know, we do things that other people can't. So uh, if the answer to any of those questions I just posed, you know, are yes, feel free to reach out. Um, you know, I graduated five years ago. I'm not far removed from you guys. Uh, I still, you know, I'm in town usually around Christmas time. I'm a, I would consider myself a good resource uh, for anyone who's interested in this route. Please reach out. Mr. Trustee has my contact information, Dr. Phillips as well. Um, my email is always open. I'm pretty busy, but you know, I do my best to reply when I can. Uh, I would also like to remind you guys that take some time today to thank anyone who has or currently is serving uh, in the armed forces and thank them for you know, thank them for you know the sacrifices they've made and continue to make you know the courage that they had to, to join you know, this organization in the first place uh, and then thank them for the strength you know, the strength that they continue to show by continuing to make a difference today. I uh, would also you know, encourage you to take time to remember those who are no longer here with us, uh, whether you know someone personally or if you don't take time to maybe maybe look up some of the some of the people who have died um, you know, serving our country, the amazing things that they've done. Uh, just kind of educate yourself on that. We use it as an opportunity to learn. Um, but just wanted to address you guys real quick. I wish I could be there in person, but 
pretty busy up here in Quantico. Uh, thanks again for having me. Best of luck and happy Veterans Day. Xavier is a pretty outstanding young man, if you've ever had the chance to meet him. And he will gladly tell you that uh, the path he took before he got into the military was a rough one, but he's overcome an awful lot, and he's, he is a, a fine young man. At this time, we have Mrs. Jones's and Mrs. Tower's first grade class, which will, classes which will be singing, This Land is Your Land.
service to the Army under the 31B Military Occupational Specialty in 2004. She is a graduate of the Warrior Leader Course, Advanced Leader Course, Senior Leader Course, Master Leader Course, Medical Staff, as well as the United States Army Drill Sergeant Academy, Master Resiliency Trainer, and the Equal Opportunity Leader Course. Her civilian education includes a Bachelor of Arts degree from Columbia College. First Sergeant Barnhill's assignments and deployments include First Military Police Company, Versburg, Germany, where she was part of the humanitarian mission to Kosovo in support of KFOR-B. Sixth Military Police Detachment, Fort Rucker, Alabama, where she served as a traffic management and collision investigator. 551st Military Police Company, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, Kentucky, where she deployed as a squad leader in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. 14th Military Police Brigade, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, where she was the small arms instructor in the non-commissioned officer academy where she served as the senior small group leader for the basic leader course. 591st Military Police Company, Fort Bliss, Texas, where she served as a platoon sergeant. 787th Military Police Battalion, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, she, where she served as a senior drill instructor, sergeant. And 252nd Military Police Detachment, Fort Leonard Wood, where she served as the detachment sergeant, and she is currently assigned as the first sergeant for Alpha Company, 787th Military Police Battalion, where her company's mission is to turn civilians into military police soldiers. First Sergeant Barnhill's awards and decorations include the Bronze Star Medal, Meritorious Service Medal, the Army Commendation Medal, the Army Achievement Medal, Kosovo Campaign Medal, and the Iraqi Campaign Medal. First Sergeant Barnhill is here today. Her, fred her daughter is a freshman in Waynesville High School. At this time, please help me welcome First Sergeant Rebecca Barnhill. I wasn't nervous, Principal Trustee, until I saw that I had to follow up those cute kids, so this is a little... All right, good morning, um, distinguished guests, administrators, staff, and students of Max Creek High School. I'm First Sergeant Rebecca Barnhill, and I would like to thank the Max Creek R5 School District for the honor of being with you today. Principal Trustee, thank you for caring enough about our veterans, all Americans who answered the call for service by holding this assembly. I appreciate all of you in attendance today, your presence promises that our veterans are not and will not be forgotten. When I look across the room, I want you to know that I see incredible potential in the roles that you may play in our nation's future. So there's no other group that I would rather be um, with today to honor our past and current veterans who were at one time just like you, trying to find their way to be the best versions of themselves. By a show of hands, who here has had a family member or a friend who is serving or has served in the military? Awesome. Make sure you thank them, and for me, I appreciate you, because as a family member or a loved one, you too have served. If you have not heard it before, the history of Veterans Day traces back to 1919 and Armistice Day, which acknowledged the end of the World War on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Armistice Day was later broadened to include veterans from World War II, veterans returning from combat to parades, prosperity, and festive celebrations in America's success. In 1954, President Eisenhower officially changed the name from Armistice Day to Veterans Day to celebrate all veterans from all walks of life who have defended our nation. And as you know, there have been many wars and conflicts since then. The Cold War, Korea, Vietnam, Grenada, the Gulf War, the War on Terrorism, many overseas contingency operations, and a host of smaller engagements. Throughout these conflicts, soldiers of all occupations contributed to mission success. Medics, lawyers, communication specialists, cooks, nurses, and even veter uh, engineers and military police and chemical specialists like those who are trained at Fort Leonard Wood. For nearly 50 years, young Americans just like you volunteered to enlist and go to basic training to join the officer or to join the officer corps, serving in about 150 different occupations and bravely answering the call to serve our country. Do any of you know what the purpose of the Army is? Many of you may think it's to fight and win wars, or to think that it's to hold off our adversaries and preserve peace. Well, both of those answers are correct. 
The Army has many missions besides combat and conflict. Your Army assists in humanitarian efforts such as support to pandemics. Your Army, including the National Guard, assists in disaster relief and um, to include hurricane response, tornadoes, ice storms. Your Army also develops and supports critical infrastructure and resources such as land reservoirs and dams. And you know something else? There's probably no other institution in our nation or our world that provides a better equal opportunities for, for success than the United States military. In addition, those of us who have worn the uniform share a common bond, leaving behind our own pursuits to serve something greater, greater than ourselves, to protect and defend America, Americans, and our own rights. We did not volunteer just so that we could go to combat. We volunteered to protect, protect our country and our Constitution and the rights of every person, regardless of race, religion, or background. So there are ways we can thank veterans for protecting our rights. The words thank you are a great support. Facing the flag and putting your hand over your heart is a way to support the military and veterans who have served at home and abroad. And it is a way to support the U.S. Constitution, which guarantees individual rights. Have any of you heard of the story of Jack Lucas? He was a U.S. Marine a private first class serving in the Pacific on a volcano island at Iwo Jima during World War II. Just one day after the storming of the beaches, half a world away in France, Jack Lucas and three other men came under fire in a hostile ambush. The enemy was attacking them with rifles and grenades. With two grenades landing directly in front of his friends, private first class Jack Lucas without hesitation in regard to his own safety, threw himself past his teammates onto one grenade while reaching out, grabbing and pulling the, the other grenade under him. He absorbed, it, absorbed the impact of the full blast into his body. He used his body as a shield to spare his comrades. And did you know that Jack Lucas was just six days past his 17th birthday? And did you know that miraculously he lived? He was presented the Medal of Honor by Missouri's own President Harry Truman in 1945. Jack Lucas represents our veterans, recognizing and answering the call, whether in light or dark, in times of war or peace, and they have all served selflessly. From the skies over Europe, to the islands in the Pacific, to the jungles in Southeast Asia, and the sands of the Middle East, American soldiers, Marines, sailors, airmen, and Coast Guardmen, like Jack Lucas, have preserved your rights, our rights, so that all of us can enjoy the freedoms to live as we choose, to pursue the things that we choose. Service members and veterans represent the very best of our nation has to offer. So I ask of you, let us not only honor them today, but let's remember them always. I know each of you will contribute to our society in different ways, you will find uh, the path that best suits you, and along the way, some of you will choose to join the military. And someday, maybe years down the road, you find yourself back at a school just like this, reminding the next generation of what service looks like. In whatever path that you choose, I wish you great success and appreciate your support and your attention today. May God bless each of you, Max Creek High School, our veterans and our great nation. Thank you, Army Strong. Thank you, First Sergeant. At this time, the high school choir is going to sing a tribute to the armed services. It's the themes for each branch of the military. If you would, you do not have to, if you would like to stand as your theme is saying, if you please feel free to do so.
crucified for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won. And the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high hang, the army's on its way. Count off the cannons loud and strong. Two, three, four, hut. Two, three, four, and we go. You will always know that the army goes rolling along. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we will fight our country's battles in the air. Fight for right and freedom and to keep our honor clean. We are proud to claim the title of United States Marines. We're always ready for the call.